We're here for the fourth episode of OMG JK. I'm Jason Kincaid. And I'm MG Sigler. Now, kicking off our first story, Facebook just hit 500 million users, which is a milestone I think we all saw coming for quite a while, right. but it's still pretty impressive nonetheless. Yeah, there's been talk that they actually hit it a while ago, and you know, we saw earlier last week or whatnot that they've been planning for this for a while, so they know like exactly when they were going to do this. Exactly. We, we may have stumbled across their photos with everyone saying <laughs> right. thanks to all of Facebook fans. And this was time curiously with the, the ABC you know, event. The, the it, interview, the hard-hitting interview that really got into the... You know, <laughs> right. I, I actually to be fair, I haven't seen the entire interview yet. I have seen some snippets. And frankly, I'd be surprised if Mark Zuckerberg hasn't been practicing it for this for you know, two weeks now. Right. But still, very big congratulations to Facebook. Uh, and one thing I think we should probably touch on is where, where is the growth going to come from Facebook? You know, obviously, there's still more growth coming uh, through the browser. But I know we were talking earlier about mobile probably being the next frontier where Facebook could possibly be huge. Yeah. And I think... They obviously realize that. I know I've been in panels and stuff with uh, Chris Cox from Facebook before, and he's basically said, like, in the future, you know, we'll all be kind of working for mobile companies. I think mm -hmm. that they realize that that's really their next avenue of growth. They have that, that new zero site mm -hmm. or relatively new zero site, which is big in other countries like in right. India and stuff. Right? And the, the interesting thing about that is that you have these countries where computers aren't as prevalent. Uh, and, and these users are actually able to access Facebook for free, even if they don't have a data plan on their cell phone, through partnerships that Facebook has arranged. And I think it's actually going to work out so that Facebook will be their, their mode of communication. Uh, you know, that's going to be like the one site a lot of people are going to be using. Right, that's kind of interesting. I know there was something, we didn't talk about this, but th this reminds me of it. So, you know, I wrote that post uh, like a week ago or a few days ago that was about how, you know, everyone was talking about they were going to quit Facebook and, you know, that obviously didn't happen. They're still growing at a, at a faster pace. Uh, you were going to counter it in some way, right? Right. I, I didn't get around to it because I was moving, uh -huh. but I, it's still coming. And uh, <laughs> I do have a valid point. My, my basic, the gist of the argument is that I think the people, I never expected people to actually quit Facebook en masse. And I, I think the people who thought that was going to happen weren't really paying attention to the, the big issue. My issue is that I think people may be inadvertently sharing more information than they intend to, and that down the line, uh, it may bite them. You think it'll come back to bite Facebook and people will leave? I, I don't know if it's going to come back to, to haunt Facebook. I think that these users who may be sharing status updates, oh, they're haunt not really using too much discretion yeah. with what they're sharing. Uh, that's that's my big concern, and that maybe it'll get cached in search engines and so on. We'll yeah. discuss that. We can discuss that further after I write my rebuttal post. Okay, fine. I'll come back to that. Okay, <laughs> the second thing that we were going to talk about is the AT and T iPhone relationship, which was discussed at length in this long Wired article um, mm -hmm. a few days ago. It's pretty interesting because they talk about that Apple has actually thought. I think they said a half dozen times half about dozen. kind of breaking the exclusivity agreement and kind of getting trying to get out of it, including near the very beginning of when it all began and Steve Jobs was kind of upset about certain things and wanted to get out of it. I mean, I, my favorite part of that, it sort of reaffirmed to me that, you know, Apple's still based in reality because sometimes when they're when they're defending AT&T all like constantly and you're like, are you living in a different world? So obviously it's all it's everyone knew it was PR spin this entire time when they were defending AT&T, but now we we have proof that you know, they know at and sucks too. <laughs> right. Well, it, it's always interesting to me, you know, I've had a lot of dealings with at and and they basically are scared shitless to say anything about mm -hmm. even their own company. You know, mm -hmm. there was, uh, Steve Jobs came out and said the thing about how, well, it takes three years, you know, for them to get new cell towers approved in San Francisco or whatnot. You know, at and has never said anything like that. They're just like, well, we're constantly working on it and mm -hmm. trying to improve. I mean, if they would just give specifics like that, I think that that would help a lot of people, but they're so terrified yeah. of Apple. And that they're just, everything is super vague. Even, I, I remember back when the Google Voice stuff happened a year ago. Right, they wouldn't Apple defend blocked themselves. It. They, yeah, it took <laughs> like days of just getting attacked before they're like, no, we didn't do it. Talk to Apple. And of course, Apple wouldn't really talk to anyone. Right. But yeah, I, I think you're right. I think at and would, would do well to actually, you know, make... It's, it's moves, like, tell the audience how they're trying to improve network reception. Right. Well, oh, the, yeah, I mean, it would help somewhat. But the, the fact of the matter is that if they can't fix the thing, it's just, you know, 
it just sucks. It That's, really, really sucks here. I can't make but, a call anywhere. But still, if, if I had a little progress bar I could watch saying, like, time until San Francisco is not so terrible, <laughs> right. that might, you know. I think that time might easier. coincide with, you know, the rumors that keep popping up now that they're going to either go to Verizon or go to T-Mobile. I think mm -hmm. once they dump a lot of customers and get them off AT&T's network, I think that's when we might start to see, see things improve. So and there was also a rumor uh, that you touched on just now that iPhone is going to T-Mobile Right. Uh, I think that was reported earlier today. Right. They said one source told uh, that it was a, a 80% chance this was happening, which <laughs> right. means absolutely nothing, right. by the way. Right. They, it saying. might happen is a better way to put it. Uh, so do you think that would really have an impact on, on the iPhone, or do you think Verizon is the only thing that would really put a big dent in it? I mean, I think that that would help significantly. Um, I think it will help Apple, obviously, because you know, they're, they're facing this onslaught from Android, you know, because they're on all the different carriers now and people have so much choice and this idea of choice and that's really, they're doing a good Ooh, job. Ooh, idea of choice. <laughs> they're doing a good job hammering that idea home. But, you know, doesn't that just all go away as soon as uh, the iPhone goes on to at least a second carrier? Ideally, all the carriers in the U.S., you know, uh, that would be better. But d does that kind of blunt what I, Android's I, been doing? I... I Maybe, but I think when people say choice, I think they want the opportunity to use it on the best carrier. And T-Mobile, you know, I've been using that for my for my Nexus One for a while now, and it's it's better than AT and T was. But they're for me. tiny. I mean, they're it's, like they're right. like a third of the size of Verizon. Right. So when people say they want choice, I think they mean the choice to go to whichever carrier they want. I mean, right. some choice is better than none, but you know, real choice is better than either of those. Um, so to our to a third story, uh, the Nexus One. Um, some, some people I've seen say this is Google's kin moment because they killed it <laughs> right. so early. Right. Uh, first things first, I should point out that Google didn't say that the Nexus One is dead, although I know how you feel about this. Yeah. They just said that they're no longer selling it online. Okay, but for, I mean, first of all, they were only selling it online to begin with. That was the original idea that they were only going to sell it online, and this was mm -hmm. kind of going to be like a, a new era of you know mobile purchasing or whatever. Right. I wish. <laughs> right. That that changed almost right away. I don't know if it's because they weren't selling many units. Mm -hmm. That's probably why. I mean, you know, it was all always kind of clunky. It was a good idea, I thought, mm -hmm. but. Most people are used to going into stores and, you know, mm -hmm. looking at the phone or whatever. That's, it's hard to break people of that habit. But, I mean, you know, in their post announcing now that, uh, you know, they're just kind of discontinuing it from that store, but it'll be available in, in Europe or whatever. I mean, the thing is totally dead. It's totally dead. So, I disagree with this. Uh, I looked at the Vodafone site. Still selling on there. That's, yeah. that's a pretty big company. It's dead. They're, they're going to have... They're, why aren't they you know, pushing whatever the next phone is? They've got three other phones that are supposedly better than that now. I know you and I both, I think, think that the Nexus One is still one of the better or maybe the best. Yeah, I mean, it's what, it's what I use. Uh, one big reason is I'm not a big fan of HTC Sense and the other right. layers of, that are being put on uh, these other phones. Right. But I just think the form factor is very similar to the iPhone, which I use for years, and it's a solid device. I mean, I just can't, I don't know. They, they're killing this thing. They're so killing this thing. They're trying to spin it that it's going to be available in Europe. Why don't they put it in U.S. retail stores then if they're so I, high on this? I thing? think they, they probably tried to. I know they initially announced that they're going to be ending the, the online availability. I think they announced that in May. Right. And it sounded like they're going to try to offer it in more retail channels. But where are they? I mean, they said they'll point. make it available to developers so they can right. use it or whatever. But the, the crazy thing about this is it's this, still the only phone with uh, that's widespread with 2.2. Right? Exactly. Yeah, no, that's definitely a very valid point. Uh, hopefully, the other hardware manufacturers will stop being so slow. Well, <laughs> I, I think someone, there was a report recently that the Droid 2, I think, is going to ship with 2.2. Mm -hmm. That'll be the second one to do it or whatever. But it's, how long have we been talking about 2.2 now? It's been, you know, since Google I.O., which was in what, May? Late May. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, it's sort of ridiculous, frankly. I'm not going to argue with the, argue with you on that point. Although, that said, this is an issue that I think a year from now will be less of a problem because Andy Rubin has talked about how they're going to slow down the number of Android releases. And hopefully, uh -huh, you know, if yeah. they're slowing down the pace, everyone will be able to catch their breath. Right, right. Up. Andy Rubin says a lot of things. <laughs> okay, moving on to the, uh, the Google algorithm ranking. So this was, there's been a few things. There was a Financial Times report first, and then the bigger story, I think, was the New York Times uh, op-ed piece, mm -hmm. which was talking about basically... Uh, should Google's algorithm be uh, regulated by the government? Because right. you know Google has so much power right now. They've you know seventy percent whatever search market share, and they're driving so much traffic to all these different sites. And you know they're in complete control of it. Should mm -hmm. the government step in? Right. And my favorite part of that article is that it, it said that the government 
should consider regulation, but it came with a lot of caveats. Like right. Google can't disclose all of its algorithm. And I was thinking in my head, so how exactly are you going to ensure you know, accuracy and fairness without looking at the algorithm? It's just, it didn't really make a whole <laughs> can, lot of sense. Can you see the government trying to get into something as complicated oh. as doing a search algorithm? And, and having a vote every time they decide whether <laughs> right. or not. Right. That, that's one way for sure to let Bing win. I mean, <laughs> exactly. nothing's ever going to change. And uh, I think in, well, in, in retaliation to that post, Danny Sullivan wrote a fantastic satire piece basically tearing apart the New York Times saying, the New York Times is the top news source in the country and it has all this power. We should open its editorial process and see how everything, <laughs> how every story gets constructed. And I think he made a lot of very valid points, uh, but a, th a couple things he did point out uh, were that Google does have a lot of properties that it links to. Um, right. So maybe I'll play devil's advocate here and say, maybe we should regulate Google because it always links to, to YouTube and, and its own places sites. I mean, what, what's your counter to that? Why, I mean, why should Google be allowed to link to, to YouTube and Google places and all of these sites created for all of these? Right, so they're kind of like king makers of their own properties. They can you know, wipe out competition and whatnot. I think there is a valid point to that. But at the same time, I mean, I think that if it was really pissing off customers and customers didn't think that they were you know, not getting the best that they could get, they would mm -hmm. either go to another search engine or force Google into doing things a different way. You know, it's like, if there's uh, you know a better weather service, this is you know kind of a stupid example, but you know when you when you look for weather at Google, weather whatever city you in, you type mm -hmm. that in, they have their own little weather widget that pops up at the top. Mm -hmm. You know if there was a significantly better weather service, or if people demanded more, I think that Google would be okay with putting that up there mm -hmm. as opposed to using their own thing. But what about the case that you know maybe users may not be upset that they're getting all this information presented to them in a really convenient fashion, right. which I you know. I actually think is nice, but devil's advocate here. Uh, what if I say that Google is actually kind of scraping all this information, and so say Google makes a, a site for my hotel, mm -hmm. and this is an argument Danny Sullivan pointed out uh, during one of his keynote presentations. You know, users are going to go to the hotel website page that Google has created, right. as opposed to my site. Well, isn't that though an issue of you know between the hotel pay, the hotel site and Google? I mean, they just shouldn't let them access that information, or you know, right. sue them or something if if they think that they're actually scraping. Rather data. than turn to government regulation, <laughs> right? Government regulation sounds like the worst idea in the world. I don't know I, what the hell the New York Times is thinking, I, but yeah. I hope they keep writing things like that because that's good for us. <laughs> Okay, I think that does it uh, for this episode of OMG JK. Tune in next week. and Oh, and we oh. supposedly have an iTunes. Uh, we have an right? iTunes feed. You right. can subscribe, uh, and then it will land in your iTunes media management on your iPhone and iPod Touch immediately. Right, and on the Android, you won't be able to get it. So. No, Android, you could use RSS, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And there's Android, they've got Listen, which is good for podcasts. So... There's a way let's, to do it. Let's say there's a way to do it on Android. There's a way to do it. It's I'm a pain in the sure. ass, but there's a way to do it. Thanks. <laughs>